I am happy to be amongst you all as part of 78 anniversary celebrations of the Indian Air Force. We had a good interaction, if you remember, when we met in August at Air Headquarters. And at that time, I have updated you on the status and future plans for the Indian Air Force. It's good to see so many of you here today, in spite of your busy schedule with the commencement of Commonwealth Games, etc., and most of other events. As far as we are concerned, we've been quite busy in the past one year in our quest to maintain our operational preparedness to tackle any challenges to our national security. Unfortunately, the country has been witness to a lot of natural disasters, as you all know, Cyclone Laila, the floods in Lake, and now floods in northern India. The Indian Air Force, along with the Army, responded in a very professional manner by providing timely relief. We helped in rescuing more than about 11,000 people who were stranded at various places and lifted more than 1,100 tons of premium material. As far as our international cooperation is concerned, we will be engaged with the Royal Air Force for exercise in the Danush. Uh, in the latter part of this month at uh, Dalai Kunda. During this year, we also took part in two international exercises, uh, France and UAE, in the past six months or so. As far as modernization is concerned, we are progressing in tune with our national aspirations and we are aware of the plans. We can talk about any specifics in the question answer session. <coughs> Our approach, as I'll be saying time and again, is more capability based rather than adversary specific. Training curriculums continuously evolving to keep pace with the fresh induction of cutting edge technologies. With AVAX and other force multipliers, our concept of operation itself has undergone a sea change. In the coming years, I foresee the Indian Air Force to be more potent, more dynamic, functioning in a comprehensively networked environment with unmatched strategic capabilities, a force which will be capable of undertaking any offensive and defensive operations. On the occasion of the 78th anniversary of the Indian Air Force, through all of you, I'd like to send across my warm greetings to all the air warriors past and present and their families and to reiterate the commitment of the Indian Air Force to the national nation in achieving the government tasks. This capability ko, as I said, four parts can be divided पहला हिस्सा होता है सी मतलब देखना दूसरा पिलर आई कॉल इट पिलर ऑफ केपेबिलिटी बिल्डअप इज पहुंचना वहां तक जहां तक आप देख सकते हैं वहां तक पहुंचना रीचिंग थर्ड पिलर इज आफ्टर हैविंग रीच इट यू शुड बी एबल टू गेट इफ रिक्वायर्ड और चौथा पिलर पीस टाइम में अपने एसेस को हम लोग प्रोटेक्ट कर पाने चाहिए तो इन चार स्पेयर में हम लोग केपेबिलिटी बिल्डअप कर रहे हैं सी जैसे होता है जैसे रेडार होते हैं एरोस्टैट्स होते हैं एवैक्स होते हैं सैटेलाइट्स होते हैं जो आपको देखना आसान कर सकते हैं रीच के लिए लॉन्ग रेंज जहाज होते हैं लॉन्ग रेंज मिसाइल होते हैं और एयर टू एयर रिफ्यूलिंग जहाज होते हैं तो ये रीच हो गया हिट के लिए वेपन्स होते हैं लॉन्ग रेंज वेरी लॉन्ग रेंज एयर टू एयर एयर टू ग्राउंड ग्राउंड टू एयर वगैरह वेपन्स होते हैं और प्रोटेक्शन के लिए एयर डिफेंस रहता है इलेक्ट्रॉनिक वॉरफेयर रहता है जो जिसकी बदौलत हम लोग अपना फोर्स प्रोटेक्ट कर सकें तो इन चार पिलर्स को बढ़ाते हुए हम लोग केपेबिलिटी बिल्डअप कर रहे हैं ना कि कोई कंट्री स्पेसिफिक ओके लास्ट समय
But things like uh, in the eastern sector as well as the western sector, some of the things can only be heavy pads or you know banding ground. You cannot expand it further because the other side is valley or there is a hill. So the FAB already told you where all the expansion plans are going on in uh, the east as well as west. Sir, Colonel Anand, Asian Defence Jet. Sir, very large orders for the aircraft. Say the heavy lift transporters and the maritime heavy aircraft have all gone to US. Is the order for MMRC also likely to go to them, especially due to Obama's visit? First, your point about heavy lift aircraft. A very quick study was carried out by these people here. Uh, considering all the aircraft that are suitable for our requirement, our only requirement Kathy, is to be able to move a large quantity of forces also, as well as a large quantity of material, because you know how much of air effort goes in supplying the forward posts of the army all the year round. The additional requirement was to be able to operate from short airstrips, the ones that you know, which are which we are building up and things like that. Now, out of all the aircraft, the one aircraft that stood out way above the rest was the C-17. You see, we have gone in for the C-17. There were a lot of aircraft. There were uh, six-engine aircraft and eight-engine aircraft carrying 250 tons, but they couldn't take off in a short distance. Because they required full runway, so we could consider that. But a very detailed study was carried out, carried out, and before reaching the uh, C-17. So that was the first. What was the second? The second question was, not only these, also the... Oh yeah, American. I'm saying, so not only the uh, transport, even the American that they have talked about in the USA. <coughs> so is the order for the MMRCA also likely to go to USA, especially you go on with it? I don't know. If you say so, it must be so. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, it's not like that. There is enough uh, Russian element also. There is enough European element also. Mirages, Oyaraya, some Europe there. Some of the missiles are from Europe. Some of the things, FGFA, MTA, they are from Russia. So it's not that we are, we would like to put all our eggs in the same basket. 